I'm Miss Elaine, and welcome to another episode of What's Cooking. Today, I'm not going to really read you a story. It's more like a book of riddles. So I want you to put on your thinking caps because on every page, I'm gonna read some clues. I'm gonna describe a food to you, and I wanna see if you can guess which fruit or vegetable it is. Are you ready to listen and play this game? Great, let's get started. Today's book is called What's in the Garden? It was written by Marion Burks and illustrated by Chris Arbo. Delicious, nutritious, what could it be? In spring, there are blossoms all over the tree, red, green, or yellow, with fruit that is round. If you don't pick it, it plops to the ground. Hmm, grows on a tree, plops to the ground, could be red or green or yellow. Do you have a guess? Let's find out if you're right. If you said apple, you are correct. And here this little boy is biting into a red one. That's probably a red delicious. What is really extra cool about this book, boys and girls, is it not only comes with one recipe or two recipes, it comes with lots of recipes. There's one for each page, one for each fruit or vegetable. Um, so down here, there's a delicious recipe for applesauce. Right now we are in apple picking season. So it's a great time to go to your local farm, pick some apples, and then try this recipe out. Okay, let's go on to the next clue. You plant them in rows and each forms a head or else you can grow the leaf kind instead. It grows rather quickly in loose, moist soil. And if there's some frost, it won't even spoil. And here's another clue. Rabbits like it. Do you have a guess? That's right, it's lettuce. And you can eat lettuce so many different ways. There's so many delicious salad varieties out there. Here's one for a mixed green salad, a recipe down here on this page. Okay, great job, let's keep on going. The part that you eat is way in the ground. So how can this fabulous food be found? Look for the feathery leaves on top. It's long and orange, a real healthy crop. Rabbits like this one too. Do you have a guess? If you said carrot, you are indeed correct. Very good. And down here is a recipe for carrot muffins. Mmm, and I love carrot cake. Yummy, I like cooked carrots with my meatloaf. There's so many different ways to enjoy a carrot. Okay, let's keep on going. Its pretty green head is a lovely bouquet that sometimes is eaten in an interesting way. Try it uncooked. It's great with a dip, munching the flowery buds on its tip. Hmm, these are getting a little bit harder. Do you have an idea for this one? It's broccoli, very good. I love fruits and vegetables of all different kinds, um, but if I had to pick my favorite vegetable, I would probably say broccoli. I like it raw and I like it cooked. It's round, it's tiny, it grows on a bush. When made into sauce, it turns into mush. This fabulous fruit can be used as a dye and it's really yummy in muffins and in pie. You were with me for last month's episode. I want you to think back to what we made and what fruit did we use for that cake? Do you remember? Blueberries, very good. And they're including a recipe for Libby's blueberry pie. Okay, it comes in a bunch and it has quite a crunch. It's chopped up in salad and stew but spreading some cream cheese in one of the stalks is another fun thing you can do. Hmm. So which vegetable comes in stalks and is leafy at the top and then just long on the bottom? You can put cream cheese on it. 
Uh-huh, very good, it's celery. You can also put peanut butter on it, as this boy is doing. He made a delicious snack called ants on a log. He's not really eating ants on a log. He's pretending that the celery is a log and he put raisins on for pretend ants. And the log is brown because he used peanut butter. Boys and girls, this is the recipe that we're gonna be making today, ants on a log, but we're gonna do it in a variety of ways. We're gonna do it with the peanut butter and raisins, but we're also gonna try cream cheese and some other toppings. All right, let's keep on going. Do you still have those thinking caps on? I hope so. You eat it in sauces with many a dish or right off the vine, however you wish. This versatile fruit is even a drink or is it a vegetable? What do you think? Hmm. I love a good sauce. I have sauce every Sunday. What's the main ingredient in sauce that you put on spaghetti or pizza? That's right, it's a tomato. And here's a recipe for an easy tomato sauce to enjoy. They posed a good question there. Is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? Or can it be categorized as both? A scientist would tell you that the seed part is really a fruit right? Even though the rest of the plants are more like a vegetable. So in the case of a tomato and a pumpkin or a cucumber, then they can be both because they have the seeds inside. So they can be both a fruit and a vegetable. Okay. It grows on a vine with skin that is green. It's sliced in a salad and it's long and lean but sometimes it's shorter with soft little prickles and placed in a jar for real tasty pickles. Ooh, how do you make pickles? We did this on a What's Cooking a couple months ago, maybe even last year. We made this, they're really tasty. And you eat them on a hamburger, on a sandwich. Pickles, pickles are made from cucumbers. So the answer there is cucumbers, very good. You can also make a tasty cucumber salad. Just bite its long leaf, you'll be able to tell. The bulb underneath has a very strong smell. It makes people cry, so it's cut in great haste. But added in cooking, it enhances the taste. Oh, what vegetable is this that sometimes makes you cry when you slice it? Yep, you guessed it, it's an onion. And here's a recipe for French onion soup. Okay, we're almost done. Let's see if you can guess the last couple. It's usually brown, way down in the soil. You scrub it or bake it or peel it to boil. It doesn't have ears, but it does have eyes. It's really a favorite when mashed or as fries. I said broccoli was my first favorite vegetable. This is probably my second favorite vegetable. Do you know what it is? You can eat it mashed or fried. That's right, potatoes. It has a long ear, but never an eye. This towering veggie can grow very high. The kernels are ripened by rays from the sun. To eat it with butter is really great fun. Mmm. A lot of times this is a uh, chosen snack for when you're watching a movie or when you go to the movie theater. What are they talking about? Grows on a cob. That's right, corn. Oh, this is a recipe for honey corn. That sounds interesting. It grows in a field right near the corn. Frost tops its head on a chill autumn morn. It's orange and round with a vine that is green and kids come to pick it on each Halloween. You're gonna see a lot of them this month. Here it is in October, right? And I've seen them on people's porches and in people's houses. So their decoration and their food and their fun. It is a pumpkin, you guessed it. Look at that nice big round one. 
another tasty treat, boys and girls, and this is what they're giving you the recipe for. I mean, you can make pumpkin bread, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin pie, of course, but a really um, easy, simple, and delicious snack to make from pumpkin is pumpkin seeds. So scooping out those seeds, right, in that icky, icky pulp, which can be really fun, scoop out those seeds, rinse them off in a colander, place them on a baking sheet, and roast them in your oven. Dash of salt and mmm, what a tasty and delicious, um, healthy snack. Nutritious food for you and me, picked off a vine or from a tree, above the ground or deep below, isn't it fun to watch it grow? And when it's ripe and good to eat, why not make a special treat? Try the recipes in this book and with a grown up, start to cook. So many wonderful recipes to try in here. So boys and girls, you can check this book out from the library. It's not in the section with the cookbooks, but it's actually, that's kind of what it is, right? Yeah, it's a riddle book and a cookbook all in one. So feel free to come and check this out. Come in and check out some of our other cool uh, cookbooks as well. But there are so many different ones to try in here. Like I said, today we are going to make ants on a log um, and we're gonna do that in the traditional way with the peanut butter and the raisins, but then we're gonna try some new creative ways too. So whenever you're ready, let's begin. Okay, everyone, so let's dive right into today's recipe, ants on a log. When we say ants on a log, that sounds kind of gross, doesn't it? I know I don't really wanna eat an ant, although I will tell you in some countries, ants are a common um, part of the diet, and they are a good source of protein. However, in today's class, the recipe that we're making today is only calling for pretend ants. We're gonna make our recipe look like something like ants crawling on a log, okay? So our first step, as you remember from the book, is um, to wash and clean our celery stalks. So mine have already been pre-rinsed, that's why I have a colander here. I have a handful of stalks, we're not gonna use all of them. I rinsed them really well and then I patted them dry, okay? The next thing I wanna do is I wanna snip off the ends. You can see I already took off that leafy part at the top of the stalk. That's already been discarded. I'm gonna cut off even a little bit more though. I'm gonna snip it at this end and at this end. I'm just gonna to toss those in the trash. Now this is a really long log, so I can probably even cut this in half and make two logs two snacks out of one celery stalk. Did you know that celery actually comes from the Mediterranean region? And it was known for a long, long time to be used um, as a source of medicine and spice, as well as food. The celery seeds and that leafy part that I just mentioned is actually ground down and used um, as a spice. But most often, it's uh, most popular for its just crunchy goodness and its versatility. When I say something is versatile, boys and girls, that means it can be used in many different ways. So in the case of celery, there's a lot of different ways we can eat it. And I'm gonna show you some of those ways today. All right, so you have two logs, two half pieces of celery. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna spread on some peanut butter to make it brown, and that will make it look like a log. Now, if you have an allergy to peanut butter, there are many substitutions that you can use, right? There's almond butter, there's sun butter. You don't have to use peanut butter at all. But this is the traditional way to make an ant on a log. This is the most common way to make it. And I think, again, it's because peanut butter is brown, and so it makes it look more like a log. If you like a lot of peanut butter, you can go ahead and pack it in, but you're gonna use a butter knife to just simply spread it in the groove of the celery, right? In that space that's kind of already hollowed out for us. It can get kind of messy, peanut butter is sticky, that's okay, kind of just scrape the sides off. Put the rest back in the jar. Now I should mention when I cut my celery, boys and girls, I didn't use a butter knife, did I? I did have a cutting knife. You wanna be extra careful and make sure you have a grown-up's help when you're cutting the celery definitely at least, at least have a grown-up's supervision, right? In our cooking classes that we hold here at the library, we have special um, cutting knives and paring knives that are made specifically for children. If you don't have one of those at home, 
You just want to make sure you have a grown-up in the kitchen with you helping and supervising at all times. Okay? But for the spread part, you can use a butter knife. Even a plastic knife like this works fine. Okay, so there's our log. Now, what are we going to make the ants out of? Can you think of a food that kind of looks like an ant because of its color and its size and its shape? Do you remember from the story what they used? That's right. Raisins are the most common way to make your ants for your ants on a log snack. I'm going to go ahead and open up this brand new container of raisins. My hands are clean. I have washed them beforehand. I'm going to take a nice little pinch full of raisins. I like raisins. So I'm going to line them up there pretty close together like they're marching in a line. I have three, four, five, six. I think I can squeeze one more on there. I have seven ants on my log ready to be eaten. What a healthy, delicious, an easy snack to make. Now, can you think of some other foods besides raisins that would look similar to ants? I don't have all these examples with me today, but we can certainly think of a lot. I love black olives. That is an option. Maybe not to put on top of peanut butter, although if you're adventurous enough to try that, I say go for it. But you'll see that we're going to use other spreads as well. And olives might go very well with one of our other spreads. What about chocolate chips? It doesn't make it as healthy, but it certainly adds some sweetness and some deliciousness to your snack. So peanut butter and chocolate chips would certainly look like ants on a log. Can you think of anything else? How about black beans? Talk about a great source of protein. You can put black beans and those could be the ants on your log. Yeah, lots, a lot of options out there. Okay, here's our traditional one. We're gonna set that aside. That is our peanut butter and raisin. Talking about other items that you can put um, on your log as a spread. I love hummus and I have some classic hummus here. Hummus comes in all um, flavors. I like the spicy hummus the roasted red pepper hummus, the cilantro hummus is my favorite, but this is just a classic hummus that I'm going to try to spread evenly onto this log. Again, you're trying to get it in that groove and it's not going to be um, exactly neat every single time and that's okay. You just simply scrape the sides. Maybe try to put it back on there if you'd like because again, I like peanut butter and I like hummus, so the more the better. Okay, now I have another complete log. I have a filled in log. What can I add for this topping? What can be my ants this time? This is where I think black olive would taste really delicious, right? Um, but I also brought something else with me here today. I have these little great tomatoes. You could slice these up, boys and girls, or if you have the really little ones, you can actually just have them. Maybe go this way, maybe have them the other way. Okay, or you can quarter them. You can cut them into fours. And you can place those on your log. They don't look like your black ants, but they can be red ants. Or maybe they can be another kind of bug of your choosing. I'm going to put one, two, three, four tomato bites on this log. Okay, let's see how many logs we can make. I have a lot of celery, so let's keep going. I want to keep going here with examples and with some ideas. Another popular topping or spread for celery, and I have to cut myself another stalk. So again, I'm snipping off those tips and then cutting it in half. These are skinny logs. That's okay. Discard your ends there. And what I was saying was another popular spread for um, celery is cream cheese. And I love cream cheese. So I'm gonna take a generous um, serving of cream cheese. 
if your cream cheese isn't soft and it came right out of the refrigerator, it's going to be a little bit harder to spread than the hummus or the peanut butter. So it might take a little more effort. Putting that in the groove. Okay, now let me think. What could I put on my cream cheese? Besides the olives and the beans that I already mentioned, can you think of another fruit perhaps? I have a fruit here today that we actually used in last month's cooking class some delicious, juicy, sweet blueberries. Do you remember my friends when we made the blueberry cake? Wasn't that delicious? Yes, now we're gonna use blueberries for our ants on a log. Again, you could cut these blueberries and make your ants smaller. I think I'm going to do that. make it look a little more realistic here. On this one, it looks like I'm going to fit five ants on a log. There you have it, cream cheese and blueberries. Okay, let's keep brainstorming. What's another spread that you could put on your celery? besides peanut butter, hummus, or cream cheese. I got to thinking this morning, boys and girls, as I was putting uh, my breakfast together, I love avocado toast, and I got to thinking, couldn't I put guacamole or smashed avocado on my celery? I sure could. And you can buy guacamole already prepared in the grocery store, or you can make your own. You don't even have to make um, guacamole per se. You could do main ingredient guacamole, right? Because the true guacamole would have red onions, um, garlic, cilantro, lime juice in it, tomato. Um, but if you just did a main ingredient guac, you would just smash up the avocado and just use that as your spread. So I have an avocado and you can see that I'm squeezing it. I'm just making sure it's ripe. And I feel like this one is ripe enough. I have an avocado here that I got at Aldi. And I want to show you a tip. I want to show you a little trick to cutting your avocado. Because sometimes I think these could be tricky. If you take your avocado, boys and girls, and you slice it down the middle, again, with a grown-up's help, and then you twist it before, instead of pulling it apart, if you just twist it, it makes it so easy to come out. You can sometimes use that sharp knife, your cutting knife, to kind of poke the pit and try to take that pit out with your knife instead of doing it with your fingers and getting your fingers all slippery and all messy, right? Of course, this one isn't working as well as I had hoped. It won't always. In that case, boys and girls, I did loosen it. I would then just squeeze or gently use my finger to pull out that pit. There, and it's gonna pop right out. Voila, it still wasn't as messy as it could have been, right? Then, if you have a bowl and a mixing spoon, or even a fork works well, and of course I forgot my fork for the show for this demonstration, but I'll use a knife. You just have to mash it up. Sometimes I like to score my avocado like this. before popping it out of his skin. Okay, and then I'm just going to, let's get rid of our garbage here. Discard that. <gasps> our logs are falling over, that's not good. There we go. I'm just gonna mash this up with my cutting knife because it's a little bit thicker. If it's not super ripe, ripe, if it's not really mushy yet, you might actually have to cut it a little bit anyway. Chop your avocado. But avocados are so good for you. It's what they call a healthy fat. It's very high in potassium and fiber, which are two things that our body very much needs. So we can get them both from a delicious avocado. Oh, 
Okay, and you can mash that up as much as you'd like. I don't mind it if mine's a little bit chunky. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take another piece, this is the, the other skinny log, and I'm gonna spread some avocado onto this one. Maybe I would add a little bit of salt and pepper if I were at my house, and I had that handy. This one is proving tricky just because it is so skinny. Let's actually see if we can get a bigger log. Now I have a nice big fat piece of celery, right? So I can scoop that avocado right on there. Much better. What are some toppings that I can put on my avocado? What could I use for the ants on this one? Again, there's lots of possibilities out there. Black beans would be a good one for this one, um, but we already mentioned that. Tomato would good really go really well with this log because again, tomato and avocado go together when you make guacamole. But I wanna do something different. Um, we did raisins already. Another dried fruit that you can use are dried cranberries or dried apricots. You can use dates. Um, but I had apricots handy today. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a few of those. Slice those up as little as you'd like. And I'm going to place my apricots on this log. Ta da! So there you have it, boys and girls. A lot of different ways to eat a healthy and delicious snack. Versatility when you can use or eat something in a lot of different ways. We simply made right now four different kinds of ants on a log. I encourage you to try even more at home in your own kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of What's Cooking, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next month. Happy snacking.